How are you? I'm doing well. You ready to kick this off? Yeah. You're like the top of the batting order here. All right, I'm going to give that to you. Have fun. We can't wait to see. All right, thank you. This is one of the most influential people who has ever walked the surface of our planet. Steve Jobs, who lived with pancreatic cancer and was not able to get cured. Pancreatic cancer is a highly lethal and incurable disease of which survival rates have not improved in the past 40 years. It's the third leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the US and will become the second by 2020. It's the most deadly cancer in the world and is in need of innovative solutions. I'm here to help solve this problem. In certain stages, treatments such as pancreatic duodenectomy surgery, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy are used to treat this disease. Currently, radiotherapy is used to help shrink a tumor down to the point at which it can be surgically removed. However, due to interpatient variability and infraction anatomical changes like breathing, tumors don't get treated effectively because of the pancreas moving. The current solutions today are either inaccurate, invasive, or are inefficient, creating gaps in the current treatment systems. Introducing the Pancreatic Cancer Deep Learning System, or PCDLS for short, a novel artificial intelligence-based system to improve pancreas tracking during radiotherapy. It's accurate, non-invasive, and works in real time, solving all of the problems with the current solutions. My innovation can target a pancreas with a four millimeter overlay rather than current methods using a seven millimeter overlay, saving millions of healthy cells, improving patient quality of care, and helping cure this deadly disease. To give PCDLS a high level computer vision understanding of the organs in the abdomen, I invented a novel U-shaped architecture following a three-step methodology using a stochastic gradient descent algorithm. I trained PCDLS using 503 DICOM scans or over 17,000 slices from the Cancer Imaging Archive and the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Developing PCDLS was really an iterative process. Let me walk you through my journey of creating my innovation with the guidance of my mentor this summer. I followed the steps of the NSI New Software Introduction High Level Process Flow or Roadmap, which is used in the industry today. I started with defining my problem statement, and through a survey that I conducted with 253 prominent doctors in this area, I was able to verify it. I also studied models of the pancreas and the abdomen to learn about the complexity in this area. Whilst training on my local machine, I wasn't able to train with a large number of images in a reasonable time. I was able to work around this problem by using the 3M high performance computing cluster. Another problem I ran into along the way was working remotely on an unfamiliar environment and system on the HPC. I was able to solve this problem with the guidance of my mentor and a 3M specialist to create a detailed procedures document. I used various statistical techniques such as a confusion matrix, ROC curve, and box and whisker plot to verify the performance of my tool. In my confusion matrix, I got a global accurate, or I got a true positive rate of around 98.9% and a very good sensitivity. PCDLS exceeded my hypothesis or claim by having a low false positive rate. I got a mean accuracy of around 80%, which is expected to improve further as the PCDLS net expands in the future. I also met with doctors from radiology, pancreatic imaging oncology, and AI experts at the Oregon Health and Science University, as well as other universities, to have a voice from the customer. When connected to a real hospital machine, PCDLS can be run through the cloud or as a computer software. I have a detailed five-year plan to globally commercialize PCDLS and improve pancreatic cancer survival rates. I envision partnering with the 3M health information systems and solutions for potentially preventable events to work and launch my tool to the cloud where I can conduct clinical testing to gain FDA and IRB approval. One of the future ideas that I'm working on is population-based screening, where adults over the age of 45 must take a body MRI scan so that my tool can diagnose and treat such diseases today like pancreatic cancer. I'd like to thank Discovery Education and 3M for this amazing opportunity. A special thanks to my mentor, Dr. Doné Demirgos, for all of her guidance and expertise, as well as the listed doctors and experts for their help. 
Together, let's increase the average survival rate of pancreatic cancer and provide hope to people in need. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. That was really a wonderful presentation. Thank you. My question is about um, what did you learn about doing um, experiments on people, um, and what are what are some of the rules that are set up to keep people safe during those kinds of experiments? So over the summer, I did a lot of research into the FDA approval process for um, some of the types of radiotherapy technology that's currently being used. And it's quite a lengthy process. And I did research into it to find how my tool could fit into it. So I know that I have to uh, partner with a university to gain access or to a uh, uh, a radiotherapy machine where I can conduct my testing on. And also I learned that I need, um, I'll need like a provisional patent to uh, improve and keep my research safe from um, other people and as well uh, to improve my current tool further. Thanks very much, very impressive work. Could you back up to your slides on the statistics? I wanted to uh, understand, um, yes, here. Um, could you explain to those of us maybe that aren't familiar with these um, statistical tests what the three graphs are? So uh, here I have the confusion matrix, which is a matrix that's commonly used uh, when quantifying AI tools, artificial intelligence tool performances. So there's four different classes, the true positive rate, the false positive rate, the false negative, and true negative in those four boxes as you can see. So the confusion matrix measures the difference between the predicted class and the actual class. So say for example, in a certain pixel of the image, my tool PCDLS predicted a certain pixel to be the pancreas, and it was the pancreas. So in this case, it was the true positive rate. And there I had a very good uh, positive rate of 98.92%. And um, for another example, let's say the true negative rate. This was where a pixel was the background and it actually was the background. And that can be extrapolated to the false negative and false positive where uh, there was errors. But my tool exceeded my hypothesis or claim, which was to have a low false positive rate and to be able to run in real time with radi radiotherapy machines. And how about the plot on the bottom right, uh, global accuracy, mean accuracy, and weighted IOU? So I created a box and whisker plot just to show um, the areas of where my tool was on the current scale. So I had a global accuracy of around in that area. With the X, you can see the mean value of around 75%. And I got a mean accuracy of 82%, which is the blue box right there. And I had a weighted IOU in the same rate. So I want to continue improving PCDLS even further to eventually reach um, very high results. Thank you. Good afternoon. Did you do research on other innovations similar to this? Yeah, so I looked into some of the patents that are currently available. And I did research on uh, the technology like AI being applied to pancreatic cancer. And I really didn't find any uh, sort of patents that are uh, currently held on AI for pancreatic cancer. So uh, there was one on AI for lung cancer, but that was completely different than the methodology that my tool's using. And that was actually uh, finding where the tumor was rather than the organ itself. So my technology is completely um, an innovation and it's unique. What was your most substantial roadblock or hurdle that you had to get over in this process? So one of the main problems with pancreatic cancer is there hasn't been much research done on it already. So when, when you're looking at another organ, such as the lung, lung cancer, breast cancer, or, or liver cancer, there's a lot of available imaging as well as um, other guidance to, that you can find available on the web and other places. However, for pancreatic cancer, there, there is little to nothing on data available online. So I had to contact a doctor at the Oregon Health and Science University who suggested me to look at the Cancer Imaging Archive, which is an open source database. And there I was luckily able to find one data, uh, one data set with pancreas CT scans with an expert radiologist confirmed segmentation of the pancreas. So that was useful because I was able to test my tool on those images. But again, it's, it's hard to find data and um, technologies that are currently being used for pancreatic cancer. 
Uh, Rashad, would you mind reminding us of what uh, 3M platforms you utilized in your, uh, in your project and or products? Thank you. So I used the 3M high performance computing cluster, which was able to actually improve the results of my tool like exponentially. It increased my global accuracy by around 20%, which, okay, thank you. You did an awesome job. Thank you so you, much. That was, what a way to kick it off. And I really appreciate the way that you explained the graphs um, because I know Jim, not everybody understands the normalized confusion matrix like you and I do. Yeah. So I know Jim appreciated you explaining that to him. So another round of applause. Nice job, Rashad. Thank you so much.